Hey folks, we're live tonight on uh, the outskirts of Westlaco at the Texas A&M Citrus Center. One of the uh, orchard citrus groves, if you will, that where they do experimentation. And there's some real reds out here, but there's also some other stuff that they're experimenting with that they say in about five years may hit the market, and it's stuff that's going to change the way we look at grapefruit. Some pretty cool stuff, and of course, so many you know strains of grapefruit uh, pioneered right here, if you will, along with peppers and things like that. So pretty cool place, pretty cool place to hang out. Let's look at those unseasonably mild temperatures we've seen the last month. We showed you McAllen earlier. That's where we set a record. If we look at a couple of other cities in the valley, Brownsville and Harlingen, you'll notice a little bit cooler than McAllen and below the records. And part of the reason for that is the records go back farther in Brownsville and Harlingen and what they do in McAllen. We said the record in McAllen goes back to 1962 and the record was set in 1989. The records in Brownsville and Harlands were both set back in 1950. That's prior to the record keeping uh, getting underway in the McAllen area for this kind of stuff. So, but you can still see every one of those well above the normal temperature for the month of January. So yes, uh, either record breaking or near records across pretty much all the valley. Very, very mild month of January for us. If we look at now, it's still mild. When you consider our normal high temperature for this time of year is 72. And look at that, we're all above that, even at 621 in the evening. It's still above normal, above the normal high. And look at Star County, 87 degrees on February 1st. Pretty amazing, right? Now let's move on. Let's look at the rest of Texas and see what's going on across the state. And temperatures around Texas are relatively mild. The state's uh, checking in with readings in the southern part of the state, uh, almost as warm as we are. But zoom out, and there's a front in Texas. That front actually cooling things off. It's only 44 in Amarillo, while it's 71 in Dallas. And it looks like now that front might actually be able to sneak into the valley and temporarily cool us off. Not a lot, a little bit, but that's a change from yesterday because yesterday it looked like that front was going to stall well to the north. Now it looks like it'll get a little bit closer than that. So there's your cool down, not significant. Still above average, but at least not in the 80s on Friday. So a short term cool down, 76, and then back to 81 on Saturday. But at least that's a little cooler of a forecast than what we're showing you yesterday at this time because that front looks like it will kind of slide into the area and then fade away. Now, let's look at our satellite and radar over the region. There's been some moisture offshore. We talked yesterday about how we might see some showers pop up in the Gulf, and then some of them are popping up over land, but down to the south of the valley, nothing moving particularly close. Valley Future Track shows what's going to happen over the next day or so, and you're going to be able to see that the clouds are going to probably thicken up. That front's going to approach uh, more moisture, higher humidity. This is tomorrow, and as we go on in, through the daytime tomorrow, you see spotty showers beginning to show up. You're talking about a 10% probability, but then that front slides through. Slightly cooler temperatures build in, slightly cooler, and then after that, I think the front washes out and we warm right back up again. But there you see Friday, a lot of clouds. That'll help keep temperatures down just a little bit. I think by Saturday, we're back to kind of a mix of clouds and sunshine with an isolated shower of possibility again. We'll look at the three-day rain chances and we'll jump to the forecast. Here's what we see for you in the next three days, about a 10% probability of a shower. So there'll be some stuff around, but it probably won't be very widespread. So your forecast for tonight looks this way under just partly cloudy skies, mainly clear at the moment. Uh, there could be some fog later on, 65 for a low. Then tomorrow, I think a few more clouds. Can't rule out an isolated shower, but I think it's a mainly dry day. High temperatures tomorrow top out around 83. That weak front pushes through, cooling things off just a little tiny bit. 83 tomorrow, 76 on Friday with more clouds. Saturday, a mix of clouds and sun, still mainly dry. And then look at Sunday. We're back at 85, partly cloudy skies. And then by early next week, temperatures push in the 90s. I think Tuesday and Wednesday, low to mid 90s across the area. Uh, next front probably due late Wednesday or Thursday. Could cool things off a little bit for the end of next week. The bottom line is, even with the front coming through, it's not going to change things dramatically. We stay pretty mild through the next several days. That's your updated First Warn 5 forecast live from just outside of Westlaco. Tim Smith, Channel 5 News at 6.